Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, as you can see, I've got my flock with me, but uh, um, thanks for, for bearing with them. They're a lot happier if um, they can see what we're up to. But uh, again, tonight, I'd like to share uh, from Brennan Manning's Reflections for Ragamuffins. And uh, the uh, one of the, actually what I think is one of the major themes of uh, Brennan Manning's message consistently. Uh, he has a lot to say about our attempts to uh, earn God's love and earn God's favor, uh, as if that's something that we could do. Um, we know that up here, but um, it's, it's hard to absorb that because the rest of the world doesn't work that way. And this is what he has to say for May 5th on self-justification. And he writes, more often than I'd like to admit, I still get bamboozled into trying to make myself acceptable to God. It seems that I cannot forego this crazy enterprise of getting myself into a position where I can see myself in a good light. Anyone caught up in the same oppression of self-justification understands what I'm saying. In our own way, we are as absurd as the character in Agatha Christie novels who cannot imagine heaven as being anything but an occasion to make herself useful little imagining that everyone else in heaven is struggling to endure the unceasing persecution of her devoted service. Uh, will we ever be free of the Pelagian fantasy that we save ourselves? And he quotes Psalm 16, 116, verses 12 through 14. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Now, I don't think that Brendan Manning was talking about how we have to feel awful about ourselves, that that's what um, giving up self-justification is all about. I really don't think that's what he's getting at. But uh, I think what he's trying to do is, that, is speak to the enormous capacity that many of us have, at least I know I can own this, is the capacity to want to be well-liked, the, the desire to manage our image, uh, and the desire to be useful, now, which is not a bad thing. But if we have a desire to be a tool in God's hands, to be used by God, uh, there's a saying that goes around that uh, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Well, not everything in the world is a nail. And if, if we want to be tools in God's hands, that also means that we acknowledge um, God doesn't always need our help, and God doesn't call for our help and our response in order for us to be loved, uh, in order for us to be esteemed or in, in God's sight. What God is asking for instead is a response of trust, a response of love, and, and yes, a desire to be useful, to live into the purpose for which we're created. Uh, but so often that can get turned around. Uh, into something that's not healthy, and in fact becomes an obstacle to us receiving the grace and the mercy and the love of God that comes to us where we are as we are, and invites us to go deeper. So if that at all speaks to any of our striving um, for relevance, maybe even our striving for usefulness in this time when, honestly, sometimes there's not a lot we can do to address some of the deepest suffering and sorrow uh, that's going on either in our lives or in the lives of people that we care about uh, in, the, in the needs of the world. It doesn't mean we're powerless. It just means that it's okay to be who we are uh, and to realize that we're not called or equipped to do everything. So may we just live into the needs of the moment uh, in what it means uh, to rest in God's hands and be useful as God calls us to be day by day. May God bless you and be with you uh, wherever you are today on this journey. Uh, and may we find and know that peace that comes through the, the love of God in Jesus Christ.